Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. Well, it is January 1st, 2021, and I can't be happier that 2020 is behind us. Maybe we'll get all this COVID nonsense uh, out of the way too. I'm, I'm hoping for the best. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful and uh, very happy and prosperous uh, new year. And uh, anyway, so uh, in this video, this is gonna be the last uh, building installment of the SR-22. And uh, I know several of you all have followed along and it's been a real pleasure doing this guitar. In this video, I'm doing the final assembly. I'm putting on all the pretty chrome stuff, bridge, setting the bridge, and I'm building the pickups and installing them, potentiometers, soldering everything, uh, putting on the, the tuners up top here, uh, slotting the nut, and uh, there's a lot to go in this video, so I kind of move pretty quickly through it and I explain. I think one of my future videos, I'm gonna start breaking some of this stuff down, like for instance, slotting the nut, how I go about doing that. You really do a step-by-step -step through, and I think that would be very helpful. But when you're doing a series like this, you want to try to get the whole thing in and, you know, so many videos and everything and, and get as much information as possible. So anyway, yeah, I hope you all enjoy the video. It's been a great, uh, great pleasure doing it. Uh, I've also got another series going on the Great Guitar Giveaway, E-War Customs Great Guitar Giveaway. And I'll put a link up here to that. Uh, if you all like to check that out, there's a free guitar in it for somebody when it's all said and done. So it would be a good one. So Anyway, I uh, hope you all enjoy this video. If you dig it, uh, give me a like and subscribe. And uh, like I said, Happy New Year, and I uh, uh, hope to see you all again soon. I'm doing my final assembly I like taking a chamfer bit and going around all the holes and cutting the finish where it uh, dripped down into those uh, holes and cavities and stuff it's just a simple way just you use it by hand and you kind of cut the finish off and then I'll usually go back with the uh, full-size drill bit whatever the hole was and clean it out like that too you want that finish out of those holes for sure so here I'm just setting the, uh, the string ferrules using a little 3 8 wood dowel. And I like to run it through with a drill bit too to uh, chase the holes so we're sure they're in perfect alignment. You know? And I'll do that from both sides. Now it's time to do the uh, uh, bridge ground. And I figure out where it's going to go. That hole I drilled previously and it goes all the way into the uh, control cavity. And I'm going to take my bead chisel and I'm going to chisel out just enough of that finish and a little bit of wood just to get that copper part of the wire to lay. I just want it just a little bit proud of the finish. So uh, when I screw my bridge down on it, it actually pinches the wire in between the wood guitar body and the top. And I'll also use a piece of the copper tape and that'll increase the surface area of contact. Now it's on the screen. We're also using a little bit of wax on the screws. These have been pre-drilled and the screws have already been in there, but uh, just as a precaution, I'd hate to snap off a screw. That's a lot of work to fix that. And incidentally, beeswax or soap works too. I just happen to have that uh, that Johnson's paste, paste wax, which works okay. I'm not crazy of the smell, but it works good for this. I'm using a chamfer bit on these too. Same same deal as before. Of course, that's a bigger chamfer bit. These are bigger holes. You just want to cut that finish off the edge because you try to clean that out with a drill bit or something, and uh, that finish is, is uh, really built up on the edge. You can pop the finish off. So 
is just being cautious. And I'll usually do it by hand like this. They make a whole ream and tool, but boy, those things are expensive. I do the old fashioned way, I just use a drill bit. I kind of snug them down a little bit with the wrench, not not too terribly tight because I still want to reposition them and, and get them lined up so they look good. I just just put enough on it there to, to hold them in place. I'm going to eyeball them and get them all running, make sure they're running straight. And I'll look at it from several different angles, make sure it all looks good. Now I'm going to drill. Now these holes were not previously drilled. I usually drill all the holes, but I didn't drill these in this one. Uh, so I'm going to make absolutely sure that that drill bit is marked because, boy, the last thing you want to do at this stage is to drill a hole through the face of that headstock. So those are teeny tiny little screws too, so little delicate screws. So I put a little wax on them too. And of course, you only put these in by hand. On this birthday, I dream away. It's a pile of hay. In my Same thing I drill through where the potentiometers are. That finish can really build up in those holes. From my TV screen and just electric snow from miles away we take a walk on this birthday I see All these components were put in there before. I like flipping it back and forth like that. That just feels good. You know, you're checking it. You want to make sure they're not hanging up on anything. And now the little strap buttons. A lot of this I do by hand. I screw in by hand because you sure don't want it to strip out or anything like that. You know, only take, there's only a few screws. It only takes a minute. Just better put them in by hand. And there it is. Now it's on the pickups. Oh, what a drag you have to go. On this day of birth, I'm down to earth. Hear the radio on an asphalt throw. I really enjoy making pickups. Very tedious, kind of a tedious thing for a guy like me, but it's really cool when you uh, put this together and it actually is the thing that's producing the sound. And I've monkeyed around, I've, you know, higher wines, lower wines. These, of course, P90s, but I just really enjoy doing it. You know? That's a pickup winder I made. I probably should have just bought one. By the time I got done buying all the parts I needed for it and and, uh, and the time I spent building it and everything, I probably could have just bought one. But but it's cool when you make it yourself. And I did a clear plexiglass on it so I could watch the inside going when I'm doing it too, which was kind of cool. I just love this shit. That wire is so delicate, it's like, I don't know, smaller than a human hair, it seems to me. 
but I'm trying to be real careful. These are tiny wires too. I think those little lead wires are 28 gauge maybe. I like P90s because you have uh, little eyelets to solder to, just like uh, single coil pickups. You got to constantly check it too because you never know when you're going to break a wire or make sure you got. So I'm constantly checking the, uh, the ohm rating. I'll check it several times throughout the, the building of a, of a pickup. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's some white writing on the back of it. I usually write on the bobbin uh, the, the ohm rating, the, whether it's a bridge or neck, how many winds are on it. I try to put the information on there so I don't forget. I also record everything in a little notebook, too. That way, if I really like the way a set of pickup sounds, I can always go back to it. You see that little uh, s uh, soldering station I have there? I was doing before with uh, a different, a cheaper. Uh, soldering uh, iron boy what a difference I mean that is so nice you can set the temperature you know it's just really great here I'm checking the polarity of the uh, the magnet the direction of the magnet of course on P90s you do one of them a reverse wind reverse polarity which I do so that little thing it's a compass it's a compass and a whistle that's a heck of a combination but it works Tells me which side is north on the on the pickup and so on. There we go, checking it again. Now 8.80 ohms, K ohms. And now it's time to put the pickups in. And here again, just like the other holes, that finish builds up around the edge of the pickup holes, and I make those pickup holes really tight. I want that uh, to hug the edge of the pickup really nicely, so I gotta take that little tongue depressor with some uh, sandpaper on it and, and clean it up on the edges. I don't want a big gap in there, so I, uh, I set those things pretty tight. Of course, I'm drilling for the uh, mounting screws. And I'll take it back out and get the springs in and everything. And there's the spring that we're just talking about. By the way, this is New Year's Eve 2020, so Happy New Year's to everybody. Of course, I'm doing what I love messing with my guitars. Shine it up a little bit. Get my fingerprints off. Okay guys, so it's time to uh, slot my nut for the strings. And uh, these are the strings I use. Uh, I buy them from String Joy. They're uh, handmade up in Nashville, Tennessee. They're really excellent strings. These are Broadway's Pure Nickel uh, 10 to 46. Uh, anyway, those are the strings I'm going to use, and for doing this, I've got my nut slotting files over here. It goes from 46 down to 10. Those are Stu Mac. They work really nice. I've got my uh, string spacing gauge that once I mark the two outside strings, I'll use this to mark the remainder of the strings. And uh, anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. So let's get going. Okay, so the first thing I do is I put the high E string and low E string in place. Because after all, that's got to be set so you got the decent distance off of the edge of the fretboard. And so I do that first, and once I set those two, then I use my, uh, my uh, string gauge to set the remainder of the strings. So I hold those exactly where I want them. You don't want to guess at that. It's really easiest to have the strings in there first. 
get those out of the way and then use my little string gauge. Of course, Stumac. Stumac carries a lot of good stuff. Not that they're paying me. I wish they were, but, <laughs> but I just believe in the products that they sell. <laughs> get them marked I just go along with my little uh, nut files now at first I'm just cutting a little groove in there just to hold the strings in place and then I'll set their final depth once the, all the strings are in then I'll go back through and I'll, uh, I'll set their final depth Now that I'm doing some serious filing, you see I got a piece of tape on there to protect my headstock. Probably should have done that when I was even uh, just setting them uh, the shallow depth, but you know, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Now I'm going through and I'm holding it down at the second fret and I want just the tiniest bit of play above that string. So I'm coming back down to this end and I'm going to each string and, and this is how I do it, right or wrong, I don't know, it works for me. I set each string so the bottom of the string is uh, uh, four sixty-fourths of an inch above that uh, the last fret. So it works for me. Now I'm getting into the soldering of everything. This is my input jack, of course. Notice I got plenty of towels taped around that thing. The last thing I'm gonna do is drop a little hot piece of solder on top of a, a nicely finished guitar. So I, I tape a bunch of towels in there and, and I do all my soldering inside. I know a lot of people, they do some of the soldering outside, but I just do it all inside the guitar. To me, it's easier that way, you know. Soldering is a bit of a trick. It takes some takes some practice. Nice. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been a real pleasure uh, doing this and this is my first uh, stab at doing a videoing of my uh, uh, the construction process of building this guitar. And it's been a blast. I've had a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you do, uh, give me a like and subscribe. And I know this is the last construction video, but I'm getting a good friend of mine to come on uh, probably in the next couple weeks and jam out on that guitar and, and show you all what it sounds like because I just... There ain't no jamming out where I'm concerned. So anyway, uh, don't forget about the great guitar giveaway. Um, I'll put another link up here about that or I'll link the video next to it or something. And uh, anyway, check that out too. So anyway, uh, happy new year and y'all have, have a great day and a great year.